Video editing is easy. Literally everyone can do it, even my grandmother. However, making a good edit that has a lasting impact is a completely different story. It took me a solid decade of trial and error to grasp the secrets of creating those jaw-dropping edits that make the viewer go... But here's the exciting part, you don't have to wait a decade like I did, I'll be sharing my 5 invaluable tips that I wish I knew earlier to instantly level up your editing game. And without wasting any time, let me tell you about the first step, or even better, let me show you and try to guess. You felt that? The stress boiling up in your body like you are there in the chaos of that kitchen? And on the contrary, we have this. Pure relaxation, like coming home after a grueling day at work. Now, if you haven't guessed it yet, I'm talking about pacing, which this series does amazingly well. A perfect blend of fast and slow paced editing keeps the story flowing seamlessly and it sucks you right into the moments. Especially in this case, where the contrasts are so big, it's a roller coaster of emotions. After a stressful paced montage, you need a slow paced part to catch back up. Can you imagine watching 40 minutes of this without any break? You would go go nuts and just turn it off right away. But pace isn't just about immersion, it could also be used for other things. <laughs> Don't stop. Stop. Comedy. We kick off with a lighting speed montage of someone getting ready, and then out of nowhere, a mundane shot of them tying their shoes. It's something you wouldn't expect, and that is exactly why it's funny. Alright, I've got a great example for the next common hiccup that many people stumble upon, and that is this video of Lorenzo building a set for a recent short film. Grabbing the sand and spreading it all over the tarp. This looks okay, right? Now, what if instead of that, it looked more like this? Again, we see Lorenzo building the set doing exactly the same as before, but with only one difference. We keep seeing him grabbing bags and pouring them out. I mean, we get that he had 60 bags to carry and empty, but do we honestly need to watch him empty all 60? As a viewer, you understand what is going on better quickly. You see a lot of bags, he picks one up and opens it. Once you have that information, there's no need to keep showing every single step over and over again. Always think about what you're telling with your edit? Have you already told your story or does it need more context? Then show more. Otherwise, don't. So here's kind of like the golden rule. If you could chop it and it wouldn't mess up the story, it's gotta go. Otherwise, you risk your edit becoming a snooze rest. But wait, even if you are able to create a sequence with the perfect pace and length, you can still mess it up. It's like pizza and ice cream. Separate, they are amazing, but I wouldn't dare to eat them mixed together. Pizza ice cream? It's like pineapple on your pizza, but then ice cream, it, it, it's the same mess. Alright, let me show you what I'm talking about. This music here is epic, like save the world kind of epic, but for this scene? Nah, it's, it's a mismatch. It's crucial to align your music and editing. Always ask yourself, what is the essence of the scene? Take this sequence here about grief, for example. Life goes on and on and on and on and on. You wouldn't use this music here either, right? I mean, again, the music is fantastic. I love Oliver Tree, but it doesn't fit here with what we're trying to tell. So it's important to have a wide range of music to choose from. For example, all the music that you hear in this video comes from our sponsor, Licked. They have a wide range of over a million mainstream tracks and over 100,000 stock tracks, which we can use. So enough tracks available for every situation. Returning to our funeral sequence, it's all about sadness and mourning. A song like this already fits the bill much better. Plus, using mainstream music like Gabriella Eplin helps you connect on a deeper level with your audience. It's familiar, and that leads to better retention. People stick around longer and engage more. Licked's vast catalog helps content creators and filmmakers find special tailored music that they need. I can use songs even from Dua Lipa and all of that while being protected from copyright strikes and not having to worry about demonetization. Now, a funeral scene doesn't always need to have sad music. 
yes, it fits the scene, but it could also work with happy music, even hip hop, any kind of music. But know that you are telling a different story if you're using different kind of music. Your visual and your music can be in contrast with each other. You know, did the FBI just kill some mafia boss and they're having their funeral? Well, then that is success for the FBI. So they might complement that scene with victory music. Besides, music isn't just background noise. It's a storyteller too. It can hint at what's coming next. We hear the music in the background and already know our hero is coming to save the day. Music has a big impact on your edits, so start enhancing your content today with mainstream music. If you sign up now, you'll receive an incredible discount including 14 days free stock music and a massively 50% off your first mainstream track. If you want to learn more about LinkedIn, how it can change your content creation, check out the link in the description down below for 50% off your first mainstream track and 14 days free stock music. Now we've got the nuts and bolts of crafting individual sequences down pads, but remember, a stellar edit isn't just a collection of killer sequences. It's the glue that holds them together seamlessly. And that's where transitions come in play. Sure, sometimes a straightforward cut gets the job done, but more often, than not, we need that extra oomph to bridge two entirely different sequences together. And no, I'm not talking about those RGB zooms. We can use audio and video to transition smoothly. Let me show you. Here we can see Scott in some kind of library being mesmerized by this girl. We slowly zoom in on his face and all of a sudden, Scott, what? This is a graphic match cut. We quite literally match the framing or shape from the first scene to the second scene to transition smoothly. But we can also match cut based on what's happening. Take this scene for example. Walter's eyeing a leaking pipe. Water droplets falling. We cut to drops falling into a cup and suddenly we're in the office where his wife works. Now how is that for a connection? Well they bridged two different sequences with a clever match cut based on what's happening in both. You see match cuts don't always have to match framing precisely. Get creative with it. As long as there's some connection with both sequences, you're golden. Now you can also instead of cutting, make it last longer and more obvious that something is changing. This is what we call a match transition, matching visually what is going on and slowly changing scene. Again, there are many different ways of doing that. Remember, we are not limited to visuals alone. We can use audio to transition too. This is done with a technique called J or L cuts. It's when the audio from the next or previous scene bleeds in to the other. Like this Maybe scene here from Interstellar. Four. It's a J cut. We can see the father Three. leaving his farm while we hear Two. the countdown of the launch, which One. is in the next the sequence. Man. At the perfect moment, we cut to the launch itself. It's a masterful use of audio as our guide, making the transition between the sequences as smooth as silk. And once you've nailed those four steps, you are on the brink of crasp crafting, crafting, <laughs> the perfect edit. But hold your horses because there's a secret ingredient missing. Why only show what's going on if we can let the viewer hear it as well? Of course, I'm talking about sound design here. And you'd be surprised how often people overlook this, thinking it's just an extra sprinkle you can toss in there, but they couldn't be more wrong. Sound design is a must in every edit. Let's break it down with some examples. First up, zero sound, total emptiness. It's unnatural and honestly a tad bizarre to watch. Now check this out. This audio was recorded on site. It adds a bit of life to the clip, sure, but it's not quite sound designed. And finally we have this. you hear it. It's a step up from the previous clip, less overwhelming. This example I sound designed. I carefully chose what sounds to include and which ones to leave out. I focus on specific actions like those footsteps. And that is what sound design is all about, focusing on the essence of the shot. Not every sound is equal as important. As an example, for a fight scene, we add the movement of the arms to make the fight even more intense. Or if you want to emphasize someone being scared, we can add the sound of their heart beating. Now, as an editor, it is never bad to know how skilled you are, because let's be honest, are you actually a good editor? Well, you can find out by clicking the video here on my left and take the video editing skill test. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you, Lick, for the support. And as always, stay creative.